This is the levitating balloons experiment. Now in the levitating balloons experiment, you're going to need, of course, some balloons to levitate with. And you're also going to need a drinking straw. So the drinking straw does need to be a milkshake straw because we need to have a wide tube. So the very thin straws don't work very well for this experiment. You're also going to try to find for me a bendy milkshake straw. You can use a straight one, but a bendy one is better for this experiment, and you're going to see why when you see what I want you to do. I want you to blow up a selection of different sized balloons. Now on the table in front of me, you should be able to see three different sizes. You can see we've got the small yellow one, the medium blue one, and the large red one. For my demonstration to you, I'm going to use the small yellow one. And what I want you to do is very straightforward. I want you to stand nice and straight. I want you to keep still for this experiment. You put the straw in your mouth. You hold the balloon in the air here above the end of the straw. Take your deepest breath. And blow your air out. And you can see what happens. Now, it doesn't actually matter if you blow too hard because you're not going to blow it away other than straight up. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. Try it with this size first. Repeat it a few times just to see what it does for you. Once you're happy you've done it a few times and you've seen what it does, I want you to try it with the different size balloons that you have and notice if there's any differences. Okay, so hopefully by now you have tried this experiment with the three different size balloons I've suggested. And this is what I'm hoping you might have noticed. Of course, when you tried the small balloon, you saw what happened for me. Hopefully you made it do a similar thing. You probably noticed that you had a bit of trouble keeping still, which is quite difficult when you first do this. Lots of people will hold it in the air and move around underneath it, thinking they have to keep up and follow it, but you don't have to do that. If you actually keep still, even though sometimes it does move away, all you do is keep still, it'll come back to you, which is rather interesting. So you would have done it with this one. You then probably found that it was okay with this one. And you might have noticed it went a bit higher for the same amount of puff that you were blowing with. With the bigger one still, I'm hoping you managed to do this too. And again, I'm hoping you might have noticed it seemed to go up even higher. So another way of thinking about that is the bigger balloons seem to stay in the air a bit more easily. Now why is this? Well, the bigger balloons, interestingly, are actually heavier, which is surprising when you think about it. Lots of people think heavier things should come down lower, but they are actually heavier because they've got more air in them. So if it's heavier, why does it go higher? Well, it goes higher because if you think about it, the big balloon is a bigger target for the air that's coming up from underneath the straw. So your air that's blowing up from your straw is hitting the balloon. Lots of it is just flowing around the balloon in both directions. But of course it hits this big surface underneath. So lots of air will hit this big balloon. So the more air that hits it, the bigger the push it gets and the higher it goes. In the case of the smallest balloon, we've got the same amount of air coming up, particularly if you manage to blow the same every time, which isn't easy, but you could have tried to do that you would have noticed that the balloon would have been a bit lower down because lots of the air you were blowing was shooting straight past it, not even touching it, or bending around it without really pushing from underneath. So only a small amount of air was hitting it from underneath because it's a smaller target for the air. And if less air hits it, it won't get such a push, and so it goes lower down. Of course, some interesting things for you to try. I wonder what would happen if we used different shaped balloons. What about, for example, sausage shaped balloons? Do you think they're going to work? What about those crinkly sausage shaped balloons you can get? What about any shaped balloon? Because balloons seem to come in all shapes and sizes these days. So I wonder what would happen with those. Or will it only work with round balloons? Well, that's something for you to investigate. A real life example of the science behind the experiment involving the levitating balloons and the floating ping pong ball could be seen, for example, in something called a boils machine. 
Now this is a machine which anaesthetists use in operations. And basically a part of the machine has some little flow meters where the gases which are being given to the patient flow through. And the anaesthetist controls this by a little dial. And they can, can make the flow change by turning the dial. And they know the flow has changed because there's a little ball in the tube that the gas is flowing through. And the higher the flow rate, the higher the ball goes up in the tube and lines up with some little markings on the side of the tube. The lower the flow rate, the little ball comes down and of course therefore lines up with a lower scale on the tube. Mm -hmm.